Hey everyone, welcome to the rank, and here's my ranking of Mark Waters' movies. Yes, who is Mark Waters? He's a filmmaker, a director, and why am I doing this ranking of him? I don't know. I've seen all his movies, and he's a good filmmaker, so why the fuck not, right? That's what I do. I do rankings, even if it doesn't make sense and ties into nothing, because that's what I do. Anyways, let's get to it. <laughs> yes, uh, he's got ten films he's directed. It's not a top ten list, because a top ten list requires a best and worst. And since he has bad movies and good movies, it is a ranking, so... Mm. FYI. So yeah, let's get to it. Here's my ranking of Mark Waters' movies, from at least three to my favorite. I recommend kind of number ten is Vampire Academy. Vampire Academy, this movie is fucking dog shit. It is so bad, it's bad, it's so stupid. This is another one of those YA kind of movies that just sucks. It just has shitty characters, shitty acting, shitty writing. It's, I know it's directed by the guy who gave us some great chick flicks, but this ain't one of them. Uh, like, the, the relationship don't make sense. I feel like they had no character development for any of these characters. The story just begins, and they just expect us to know who these people are and stuff. We, we didn't read the book, so why the fuck would we know these people? And yeah, like, I just, I didn't like this movie. I didn't like how it was directed. The action was an absolute joke, and the comedy wasn't all that funny, and this is probably one of my least favorite YA movies out there, and yeah, it is worse than Twilight. It really is. It is fucking terrible. At least Twilight. It's hilariously awful. This movie is just fucking awful. And yeah, worst Mark Waters movie. Coming in number nine is Bad Santa 2. Yes, ah, I can't believe, uh, it's been almost two years since I reviewed this movie, and I hated it, and I still do. I haven't watched it since I first saw it in theaters. I have not watched it again, because why would I do that to myself? The first Bad Santa is not a movie I love, but it is still a good Christmas movie and very funny. It's not a movie I watch every Christmas, but... I watch it every couple of years. It's a good time and stuff. I love Billy Bob Thornton in that film. This one, this movie is just so disgraceful, so unlikable. It's just, it's so nasty and stuff. And it could have worked if it was at least funny, but it's not funny. It's not funny at all. It's a really shitty screenplay with shitty characters and shitty acting. And just, it felt, it, this movie just thought, like, the more despicable it got, the funnier it is. But that's not... I know comedy does come from misery, but it's got to make sense and have a point to it. And none of the comedy had any point to it. It had any substance to it. So this movie was just very lackluster and absolutely pointless and a shitty-ass film. Conan number eight is Mr. Popper's Penguins. Yes, oh, God, Jim Carrey, you're better than this. You're better than this, Jim Carrey. Uh, I know he did a lot of ass turd of films in, like, the 2000s and stuff, and... This is no, like, number 23 bad, but this is still pretty embarrassing and really stupid and, like, come on. Like, kids' movies about penguins, I just don't think they can work. I'm not a big Happy Feet fan, and I'm not a Mr. Popper's fan. I don't think Jim Carrey was enjoyable, or I know he's trying to be super likable and stuff, and I know he's done a lot of kids' movies, like The Grinch and Horn Years of Who, which are fine films. But I don't know what he was doing with this movie. I don't know where he was going with this movie. I don't think he read the screenplay to this film. Like, he couldn't have. Like, the dialogue he has to say in this film, it, it's like something out of a Treehouse TV show. It is just juvenile and absurd, and the CGI is absolute garbage, and the story is absolute garbage, and, yeah, it's an absolute waste. Coming to number seven is Ghosts of Girlfriends Past. This is the most, one of the most formulaic, cliche romantic comedies out there, like, there, this movie takes no risks. It is, like, every paint by numbers rom-com out there. It even has Matthew McConaughey. This is during the time period Matthew McConaughey was doing his shitty-ass romantic comedies, like, Failure to Fucking Launch and How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days and Fool's Gold and shit like that. This movie is not funny. This movie has zero chemistry between its leads, Jennifer Garner and Matthew McConaughey. And it's basically the Christmas Carol story. It's basically his life. Oh, his girlfriend's past, present and future. What would life be like if he continued his ways of being a womanizer and stuff? And it's so dumb and so played out. This story is so played out. The only thing that's redeeming in this movie is Michael Douglas. He has, like, two good lines in this film that are actually pretty darn funny. And, yeah, other than that, this movie's very drawn out, very cliched, and just terrible. Coming to number six is Head Over Heels. Head Over Heels. The reason this movie is not, like, much higher or lower on this list is because I haven't seen it in like 12 years. 
Because that was when it first came out with Freddy Prince Jr. and all the girls and stuff and everything. And I vaguely remember this movie. I remember laughing at two scenes, so that's something. I probably would watch it again and think those two scenes are stupid, but... Yeah, I'm not a Freddy Prince Jr. fan, unless he's playing Kanan in Star Wars Rebels. This guy just can't do movies and just can't act to save his fucking life. This movie is not good. There's no chemistry, there's no likability, there's no charm or originality about it. It's just a paint-by-numbers rom-com, just like Ghost of Girlfriend's Past, but at least I remember laughing more in this movie. I have to pre probably rewatch re it, though, so... Coming to number five is Just Like Heaven. Just Like Heaven has Reese Witherspoon and Mark Ruffalo. And the story of this movie is basically this girl, she's, she's a doctor, she's a workaholic, she gets into an accident, she has like an outer body experience, she doesn't remember who she is, and only Mark Ruffalo can see her. Of course, begins a romance and a rom-com. I saw this movie in theaters when it came out with my mother and sister, and I remember really liking it, actually, when I first saw it. The more times I watch it, the dumber it gets. But it's, it's a harmless rom-com. It has some funny scenes by Mark Ruffalo. And him and Reese Witherspoon have some decent chemistry. John Heater's a little unbearable, but the movie is harmless. It's not good, but it's harmless. Coming to number four is The Spiderwick Chronicles. The Spiderwick Chronicles is another movie I don't really watch a lot. I remember watching when it first came out, and I re remember really, 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 really liking it. I liked Freddie Highmore in these dual roles. I liked Seth Rogen. I like the simplistic fantasy element, and it's a simple plot and story, very easy to follow. It's great for kids, adults, and everyone. It's got good writing and the likability to it. It's got some good side humor. It's just an all-around great film. Not the most watchable, because I never really wanted to ever watch this movie again. I don't know why. It's just, it's nothing like off-putting about it. It's just, it doesn't have that watchability factor. It's a great film, but it doesn't have that factor of watchability, but still. It's a great film. Coming to number three is The House of Yes. This this is a great film. This is super underrated, starring Parker, Parker Posey, and really funny film. Really funny film, great romance, a lot of good comedic aspects. I really, I really like the story, really like the pacing and stuff. I think this is just an all-around very underrated film. And yeah, if you haven't seen it, yet, check it out. It's a good film. Coming to number two is Freaky Friday. It's Lindsay Lohan. It's not the only Lindsay Lohan movie that's on this list. Spoilers for number one. Yes, her and Jamie Lee Curtis are in Freaky Friday. This is a remake of the original Freaky Friday, which was an okay film. This one actually was a better remake. It was a better film. Because the modernization of people and stuff, and how the original, she was a stay-at-home mom, but in this one she actually has a job and stuff. It actually shows more layers to these characters and how they have to learn about each other being in high school and having a full-time job as a psychologist and stuff. It is a really great film. It's uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan look work beautifully off each other. They blow, both play each other really, really well and stuff. And the performances are really strong, and they both are super, super funny. They both have great chemistry. And them two are the reasons why this movie works so freaking well. The side characters are fun enough, but these two and these two characters and how they have to swap roles is what makes the movie so funny and so enduring to watch. And yeah. The original Freaky Friday is fine, but this one is a much better film and a much more relevant film, and yeah, it's a great one. And my number one favorite Mark Waters movie is Mean Girls. Yes, Mean Girls is such a great film. Another Lindsay Lohan movie. Yes, if Lindsay Lohan stayed this talented, she would be one of the great actresses, but sadly no. But still, uh, this movie's great. Tina Fey's screenplay is really solid. The direction is really great. It really talks about high school in a very... Interesting, unique, and very funny way. My high school wasn't exactly like this. My high school was more like Daria meets like Perks would be a wallflower. That was like sort of my high school life and everything. But the movie does show like the cliques and stuff and the social aspects of high school in a really, really funny, very clever way. The performances are all really great. Lindsay Lohan, Lizzie Kaplan, Emma Seifert, Lacey Chabbard, Nick Rich McAdams. Jonathan Tucker, uh, not Jonathan Tucker, what the fuck am I talking about? He's not in this movie. <laughs> um, a lot of other people, uh, Tina Fey, Amy Fuller, uh, Tim Meadows, all of them are super funny in this film, and yeah, it's, it's a film I love to quote and stuff. Danny DeVito, I love your work! <laughs> you go, Glenn Coco. Just a quotable film I watch at least twice a year. Great film. The best movie this director has made. So yeah, that was my ranking of all of Mark Waters' movies, from at least favorite to my favorite. So in the comment section below, please tell me, did you agree with this ranking? If not, give me your ranking of all of Mark Waters' movies, in your opinion, from at least favorite to your favorite. Com comment below, let me know, and as always, if you like this video, please like, subscribe to this channel, and join the dark side.